Hi, and welcome to question eight of the 2022 paper two Leaving Cert Ordinary Level Maths. As always, if you want a copy of the notes I'm working off, just send me an email at shanetroy at gmail.com. Um, we'll get stuck in here. So this question here is looking like area volume. So let's give it a read. And it says that the top of a particular lighthouse is in the shape of a hemisphere on top of a cylinder. And they give us a diagram here so they see the cylinder there and then I see the hemisphere on top. Okay. Now it says the hemisphere and the cylinder both have a radius of three meters. So they mark that three meters in the bottom. It's the radius of the cylinder and therefore it'll be the radius of the circle up here. And then they give a kind of image here of the thing. Now the question is actually asking part A, part one is saying find the volume of the hemisphere Give your answer in meters cubed in terms of pi. So don't need to worry about that too much. The important information here is that they are mentioning volume. Okay. Now they give me a shape. Now they say a hemisphere, which is half of a sphere. Now straight away, I'll go to my math tables. Okay, I have a digital version of these. And if you want, the, I can always send it on to you as well, no problem. If I go to the contents, I'm looking for uh, volume. Okay, so click on that, it'll bring me to, I see a cylinder, I see a cone, I see a sphere. So this is what I'm looking for. And once I have that, I want to write on the page. So let's see now, can I get this pen working? Um, volume is equal to four over three pi r cubed. Now that's for a full sphere. So we want a hemisphere, which is a half of a sphere. So in essence, I'm multiplying this by a half. Now you can multiply the fraction here by the fraction in front, okay? What's a half of four over three? It's two over three. Now you can use the calculator whatever way you want. So that's my formula. The volume of a hemisphere is given by this formula, which you're not given directly. And the second you write that down or calculate it or even make an effort at it, you're probably going to be on the low partial. And in a, in a sense, your total volume, you're given a copy of the math tables. All you have to then do is find the sphere and then recognize what a hemisphere is that's half a sphere. And that's what problem solving is. Even getting to a certain part of that problem solving strategy we should achieve you marks. Now we want to now put in our radius. So pi we know, now pi, I use the calculator pi, but you can approximate it to 3.14. And we were told that the radius is equal to three. So all I have to do now is substitute in, now they tell me they want the answer in terms of pi. So if I put pi in there as two over 3.14, I'm, I'm going to be going into a decimal answer. So I could leave that just as pi. And even if I program that in the calculator, as pi, the calculator should give me the answer in terms of pi. Now the radius was three, so I'll substitute that, and it's to the power of three, not two. I often see students in when they mark making that mistake of writing down a power of two, uh, or maybe doing a power of two in the calculation and, and getting the wrong answer, and I can see how they do that. Now I can put that through the calculator, and I should, although I haven't prepped this, I'll have to try find it in the, too many things open. So um, I'm going to program it just like it looks on the page. I just appreciate the camera might be too small there. Um, for me, the pi button is down here on the bottom. Okay, so shift pi button and then brackets three to the power of three. Once I have it looking just like what is on my page, I'm happy to go press equal, and I got 18 pi is the answer. Now, the units there are meters. Volume is always given in meters cubed, okay? So that's the answer there. Um, actually, I just realized too, that's not the right answer. Um, it should be, what was it again, 18 pi. So the volume is equal to 18 pi meters cubed, okay. Because I was worried about that and I just went ahead and checked the marking scheme and I was wrong in the notes, so I've amended them and 
in a sense, just to reflect on what we just did. We saw that it said volume of a sphere, so I found that formula. Then I re realized that it was a half sphere. Okay, so I multiplied by a half. Okay, or divide the whole thing by two is the same thing. Found my new formula. Okay, um, and then input the information that was given, the radius of three, used the calculator, and got my answer of 18 pi meters cubed. Now we'll problem solve the next part there, which says the volume of the cylinder is 36 pi meters cubed. So to help myself make sense of this, I'm going to, in a sense, just for my own sake, draw a cylinder badly and go, the volume of that is 36 pi. Now it's meters cubed, the units cubed, whatever. And it says, work out the height of the cylinder. Now, if I go again to the maths tables, and hopefully they'll pop up, I have the volume of a cylinder is pi r squared. So why not write that on the page, okay? So volume is equal to pi r squared, the area of a, of a circle, times the height, pi r squared times h. Now, I know what pi is. I know what r is. I was told that the radius was 3. My unknown is h. And normally, you'd be given r and h, you'd find the volume. But in this case, I know what the volume is. They just told me it was 26 pi. So this equation has one unknown. So I know the v is 36 pi is equal to, well, pi times the radius squared times h. I don't know what h is. So there's only really one unknown here. I need to solve this using algebra. If I go left to right, I could divide both sides by pi, but if something's common to both sides, they immediately cancel because I'm dividing by pi both sides. They cancel, they cancel. I'm left with 36 is equal to, now 3 squared is 9 times h. Now, if you think of this, 9 times some number equals 36. Now, I can use algebra to get rid of the 9 by dividing by itself. Do it to one side, do it to both. So I end up with h is equal to 36 divided by 9 is 4. Okay. Now, that's a height in just length, so it's just meters. And that should be it. Big chunk of marks here. For if you have practiced the different questions in paper 2 to do with area volume, you'll see that they're, they're, they're consistent. If there's different situations every time, a sphere versus this versus a cone, whatever. But it's just a matter of finding the formula, writing it out, and either using the information provided or trying to think to a slightly deeper level to figure out what information they haven't given you directly and you have to kind of figure out, you have to find it first. Now, it can be challenging. I'm not trying to dismiss or undermine how hard that can be. The problem solving strategies you develop through practice will help you to solve whatever is asked on the actual day. And there's the answer to note um, digitally, looks good. Now, this one, part B here says the diagram on the right below shows part of the base of the lighthouse. It is in the shape of a cone of radius 7.5 meters, from which the top part has been removed leaving a horizontal circle of radius three meters. So this is tricky, let's take our time. Now I pause the video just to have a read of that again. And I suppose we should focus on just the fact there's two diagrams here and you have a cone, okay, it's got radius 7.5, height 47, and this angle A marked on it. And then you have the top of this cone removed and that's probably where the lighthouse sits on top and this is the foundation, okay. But um, there's a certain segment cut off it. And there's a new height here from the base. The, the radius is still the same, but there's, a, in a sense, a secondary radius. Okay. Now, part one here says the height of the cone before the top part is removed is 47. So that's where this 47 comes from. Work out the size of the angle at the base of the cone marked A in the diagram above, and then give your answer to the nearest degree. Now, if you see this, they've actually helped you out by giving you this line here. That creates a right angle triangle. Now, that's your angle A. So we know information about this. We know that this is 47. So it's 47 the whole way across. So it's 47 here. Now, on my little diagram I'm, I'm making, that's 47. And down here is 7.5. 
Now, if they're asking me for this length here, I could use Pythagoras, but they're not asking me for a length, they're asking me for um, angle. So it's a right angle triangle, so it's probably going to be either of the trigonometric ratios. Sine of an angle relates the opposite to the hypotenuse side. Cause of an angle has a different relationship, but it's the relationship between the adjacent side and the hypotenuse. And then tan of an angle is relates the opposite to the adjacent. Now they're given the mass tables as well. So in this diagram I've drawn here, if this is the angle I'm focused on, that informs me about what the labeling is. So that's the opposite. Now the hypotenuse the long, is the longer side. That will always uh, be the longer side. And then the opposite will change depending on the angle you're finding. So this is the one I'm trying to find. So that's the opposite and that's the adjacent. So if I look along the three formulas and go, I'm trying to find the angle. Okay, that's what I'm looking for. I have the opposite, but I don't have the hypotenuse. I only have one of the three unknowns. This is not solvable. Move on then, there's no point worrying, something else will work. For cause, I'm looking for the angle. I have the adjacent, I don't have the hypotenuse. Okay, now I could find the hypotenuse by using Pythagoras, but I don't want to because that's more work. Okay, but nothing wrong with doing that. Now the last one here, tan, I'm looking for the angle. I have the opposite, I have the adjacent. So the ratio relating the opposite to the adjacent would give me 47 over 7.5. So there's some, there's some angle that equals that number, okay, for the tan ratio. And that's all sine, cos, and tan are. There are different ways of describing a right angle triangle. And they're just called sine, cos, tan. You could call them ratio one, or relationship one, relationship two, relationship three. It doesn't really matter, okay? Um, the third relationship tan, I can now guess the angle, okay, and try match it to the number, or I can use the calculator and find inverse tan, okay? So I could start guessing. So tan of, let's say, 50, okay, is equal to 1.19. Now, 47 over 7.5, let me just work that out is, okay, 6.2, say 6.2. So I'm gonna go tan of, let's go 60. No, tan of 80. Okay, so it's, it's a big angle. Now I can keep guessing tan, but the inverse tan, if I know the fraction, okay, so 47 over 7.5, I'd know the number, it will find which angle relates to this number exactly, not me guessing. And I got 80.9, okay? So I can, I suppose, denote that as um, A is equal to inverse tan of that number 47 over 7.5. And then we said A was equal to, no, I've forgotten already, um, 80.93. It says to the nearest degree, okay, this seems to be the answer, 80.93, and then we rounded up to nearest degree is 81. Now I've made a mistake here. Jesus Christ. It should be degrees, okay? So it's because it's an angle. I don't know why I made that mistake. I'll fix it after. Now part two then says, Find the distance, let me go back to the answer here. Find the distance um, marked K on the diagram, the height after the top part is removed. Now, in a sense, what they've done is they've cut this at some stage, okay, here. I don't know why the pen's not working. Okay, um, here. Now, they also give me a height here of k, up to that point is k. Now we can do, we can equate, and you can equate the the radii with the different heights. So in, in a sense, it would be, what was that again? That's actually, yeah, it was three, okay. So three over 7.5, damn it, damn it. Sometimes PowerPoint is annoying. Um, so three over 7.5, that relationship, okay, to the uh, small with the big, k over 47. So I'm relating this and this, okay, to this and this. That's in essence what I'm doing. 
And you can always do that. It's a kind of common question when it comes to geometry. And you're applying this here to maybe more of a trigonometrical case. Now with this, I want to, I want to find the K. So I need to get rid of this 47. Now, one of the easiest way of doing it is just multiply that by 47, because that would make them cancel. If I do it to one side, I have to do it to both. Okay, so they will cancel. You're left with k is equal to. Now, I'm just going to swap everything around. Um, I should be answer the next page actually. Why mess? K is equal to 94 or five, uh, which is equal to 18.8, and I should most likely have the units there. Now, I've just realised that my um, answer was maybe wrong there. It's, it's, this isn't wrong, but I'm relating this and this with the full height, okay, and this height, okay. So I I, I'm, I, 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 I said that wrong in the last uh, few minutes. So I found um, this. Okay, 18.8. Now I want k. So the full height is 47. And I need to take away the 18.8. And that'll be, I should have this in the marking scheme there, uh, 28.2 meters. Now apologies for going down to the, the wire here. Okay, so let's fix that. I made, I made two mistakes there in the marking scheme, so I'll fix them after. Now part C here says assume that the fastness lighthouse can be seen from anywhere within a circle of 50 kilometers. So this is my lighthouse. Okay, and anywhere within 50 kilometers would be a circle around it. Now a terrible drawn circle, and that would be 50 km. Now even drawing that, as bad as it is, shows I understand the, the question. Okay, um, work out the area of the circle within which the fastness lighthouse can be seen. So I can look this up at the maths tables, but the area of a circle is pi times the radius squared. Now I know there, I know what pi is, okay, I'm looking for the area. I know pi is equal to, I can say 3.14, but I should use the button on the calculator. And I know that the radius is equal to 50. So this equation only has one unknown, so this can be solved, okay, uh, 50 squared. Put that to the calculator. I'll just check the answer in the notes here. Pi times 50 squared, I get I got 7853.98. It says to give your answer to correct to the nearest km squared. Okay, so this nine is what matters. Okay, that's greater than five. The next number rounds up by one. I get 7854 and I should put in kilometers. Okay, just to make sure I don't get penalized for that. Actually, kilometers squared, sorry, because it's an area. Okay, now. The answer is 785454. Five, now, part two says 50 kilometers equals 27 nautical miles. Use this to work out how many kilometers are in one nautical mile. Now, you have a statement here. Okay, I'm going to rewrite it. 50 km is equal to 27, we're going to say miles. Now, this statement isn't given in, um, I can remember my math teacher. Um, saying always bring it back to one. If they say they want one nautical mile, that's what I'm trying to bring back to one. Now the simplest way to change 27 into one is to divide it by itself. If I do something to one side, I have to do it to both. So 27 divided by 27 will give me one mile. I'm just worried about what is that number um, in the calculator. I'll have it done here on the next page. Uh, I get 1.85185. Okay, I'm not sure if that goes on the calculator forget. But I'm asked to round out the four significant figures. Currently it has four, two, one, six significant figures. So I don't need these two. Okay. Now I'm asked to kind of round it. So the eight here, I've kind of gotten rid of it. I apologize. Um, is greater than five. So the next number rounds up by one, 1 1.852. So we are asked to deal with significant figures and they are, I wouldn't say awkward. There's kind of different rules than rounding, but in essence, you're rounding to a certain number of, of significant figures. And their usefulness comes when you, you, you're trying to use measurement devices. That's the best way I always explain it. And if I'm using two different measurement devices with two different levels of accuracy, we have to be very careful that we don't create error and then compound the error throughout a calculation. 
And that's why you might round to a certain number of significant figures based on the measuring axis of measuring um, accuracy of your least accurate device. Now, there's other uses too. They don't come up very often. So I wouldn't worry too much about it if you do see it. In that case, just if you round it to four significant figures or four digits, for lack of a better word, you would have got it right without, without necessarily knowing. So don't worry too much about it. Now, I think we're coming to the end. So I think D is the last part. So part D here says the top of the fast net lighthouse F is 49 meters above sea level. So they have a lighthouse here. That's the point. Okay. The angle of elevation from the top of the lighthouse from a ship, the angle of elevation of the top of the lighthouse from a ship S, that's the ship here, is 1.2 degrees. So that's your angle of elevation. Um, find the horizontal distance mark D, so this distance here, from the ship to the base of the lighthouse and give your answer in kilometers. So these units here in meters, so we need to at some stage uh, change the answer to kilometers by multiplying by a thousand. But we'll worry about that later on. Now, I'm only given, this is a right angle triangle. You're told here is right angled, not in the statement up here, but by this little icon. But this is right angled, so it's 90 degrees. That means it could be Pythagoras. Okay, now for Pythagoras to work, I'd need to know two of the three sides. Um, I don't. So Pythagoras, even if it was useful and helpful, I can't use it. So again, it's either the sine, okay, cos, or tan ratios. And it's just a quick way of writing. Some people say, call that so, ka, toa. Now, if this is my angle, then this is my opposite. This is my adjacent. And by definition, the side across from the right angle is always the hypotenuse. So I have the angle, okay, for sine. I have the opposite, but I'll end up finding the hypotenuse, which is not what I want. Now, I, I could use sine and then use Pythagoras, okay, but that's an extra step. So I'm going to put, I'm, I can use that, I'm just not going to. I'm going to see will any of the other two ratios work. So for cos, I have the angle, 1.2. I'm looking for the adjacent, and I don't have the hypotenuse. So I only have one of the three things that won't work. Now, tan, I have the angle, I have the opposite, and it finds me the adjacent. So tan is, is the best bet here. So tan of 1.2 relates to some number, which is 49 divided by something. Okay, I'm just going to call it X. I could call it D. Actually, they call it D. I should call it D, but whatever. Now, I need to solve this. A tan 1.2 is a number. The only unknown I have here is x. Okay, So I'm going to get rid of the x by multiplying by x. Okay, that They'll cancel. If I do it one side, I have to do it both. I'm also, let's, let's just resolve that. x tan times 1.2, or tan 1.2 is equal to 49. Now, I want to have x equal, so I'm going to divide here by tan 1.2. Do it one side, I have to do it to both. And they end up then, they cancel with x is equal to 49 over tan of 1.2. I hope the algebra makes sense. Um, I hope I'm not going too fast. Now, I would have the answer done out here. So it's 49 divided by tan 1.2. I put that through the calculator and I got 2339.235 meters. Okay. Now, it asks for me to leave my answer in kilometers. So to find out how many kilometers in a meter, I divide by a thousand. Okay. If I wanted to find out how many uh, millimeters in that number of meters, I'd multiply by a thousand. And that's the joy of the metric system. It's going up and down by a thousand. I can just move my decimal place number of zeros. There's three zeros. So I move it once, twice, three times. And I end up with 2.339235, which is very accurate. They asked me to leave my answer to only two decimal places. Okay, so that's the second decimal place. So the number that matters here is the nine. Nine is greater than five. The number before rounds up by one, and I get 2.34 kilometers. Does that make sense? Okay, like if your ship is going to be fit pretty far away from the lighthouse. Okay, if you imagine this is a very small angle, so it's, it's that's really not an indication that it's very far away. It being 2.34 kilometers away. Yeah, that doesn't ring any alarm bells. Okay. Um, if that was like two meters or 0.2 of a kilometer, like 200 meters, you're 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 going to run aground. Just 
try put these scenarios through your brain and go, does it make sense? And if it doesn't, and you think your answer doesn't make sense, just double check your problem solving technique and see if you can figure out if anything went wrong in that. So that's the end of question eight. So as always, if you want a copy of the notes I'm working off, just send me an email at shanetroy at gmail.com. And please like and subscribe to get access to more playlists. Thanks and see you on question nine.